A good performance at its Chrome business has saved what was otherwise a poor set of interim results from PGM producer Teresa. And despite a small uplift in revenues, pre-tax profit was down 41%. Dividend, though, has been kept at three cents per share. Fivos Perulis is the chief executive. He joins us now on the line. Fivos, welcome. It's a good time yeah. to catch up with you, actually. Uh, clearly, there are headwinds to the business. It's uh, hitting a lot of um, metals producers, of course, at the moment. Your operations are in South Africa, and I know it's tough there as well uh, with uh, power load shedding and logistical issues that you uh, have uh, described in your report. How would you um, describe what's been happening in the first half of the year? Yeah, so thanks, Jeremy. It's It's been a challenging first half. Uh, first, Firstly, our production was impacted by inclement weather. We had uh, unseasonal rainfall. Uh, being an open pit, uh, this creates challenges uh, of getting material out of the pit. Uh, so, so that was the first, um, I suppose, headwind. And then when we look at uh, the, the environment in South Africa, whether it be load shedding or load curtailment and transport challenges, I think we fared extremely well. We navigated these challenges. We're able to deliver into a rising chrome market and, and key that we're able to export and, and actually fulfill our, our orders with our end users, uh, primarily in Indonesia and, and uh, China uh, for that uh, buoyant stainless steel and, and chrome market that we benefited from. Uh, on the PGM side, we saw prices softening uh, on the back of uh, a higher inflationary environment and weaker demand. Uh, we do see some upside coming into the second half. So so when we frame the half, uh, we see you know we're, we're able to deliver strong cash generation, continue investing in our growth, and importantly, maintain our dividend policy uh, of distributing at least 15% of net profit after tax uh, in the form of a yeah, dividend. So that three yeah, years since. Yeah. You, you, you talk about what could well be what you hope to be a, a better second half of the year. How has the second half started? So from a production point of view, we are, are normalizing. Uh, we appointed a, a third-party mining contractor to assist with some of the backlog they have uh, uh, mobilized and are on site as we speak. Our recoveries and production are improving at the mine. We still face uh, similar challenges around uh, load curtailment and uh, logistics, but we manage those. Uh, we have installed standby power generation, so we can withstand various levels of load curtailment, as industrial users refer to it, uh, up to the equivalent of level six. Thereafter, we have flexibility in our processing plants where we can shut down certain circuits and continue operations, bearing in mind that we're an open pit mine, so the majority of our, en our energy is diesel um, consumption and diesel usage. Let's pick up on a point that has come through in your um, uh, presentation, which I know is available to investors on the website. You talk about delivering Vision 2025. Let's hear a little bit more about this because it's obviously um, in, in everybody's interest to get a, a plan going. Um, and what is yeah. your Vision 2025? How do you see things developing in the longer term? Yeah, so I think first and foremost is our expansion an investment in the Caro Platinum Project, a, a tier one asset situated on the Great Dyke. We're under construction as we speak right now, uh, investing in, in that project. What does that entail? It's an open pit mine uh, with the potential of 17 years life, targeting production of 190,000 PGM ounces. Uh, we're scheduling first ore in mill in July of next year, so short build time. Uh, we have completed or nearly completed the earthworks. We'll be pouring first cement in June next month, and we'll be mobilizing a contractor to do a trial mining open pit, uh, which will last three months uh, until September. Uh, and in September, we'll start with the um, uh, fabrication and uh, mechanical work on site so progressing well we have almost 440 people on site in zim at the moment primarily contractors uh, and our own employees uh, there's a huge amount of support for the project on the ground it's a very enabling uh, encouraging environment uh, and you we can see it uh, you know, pointing in the right direction. So a key pillar of our vision 2025 is creating that diversity, that second tier uh, large asset in a, a separate jurisdiction, uh, supporting our cash flows and our cash generation ability. 
Coupled with that is investing in our own business, which we've done successfully with optimization, the Vulcan plant being a point in case, and we're continually investing in process technology and optimization of our business. Then we go one step further, and I think for a business our side, we, size, we're very proud of the energy effort and investment we put into research and development. So we have a number of key initiatives underway, one of which is the platinum group metal beneficiation in the form of smelting and uh, beneficiation or uh, precious and base metal refining. And uh, we're in the process of concluding a front-end engineering design for a full-scale plant to manage the flows of the Teresa mine, the 180,000 odd ounces of PGMs. We do currently run a one megawatt PGM smelt on a commercial basis. So tried and tested and proven process and technology. And then we look at other applications for our Chrome and, and we're working on energy solutions. Um, and and I think you, you may have picked up that our solar project in South Africa has been approved. We've got the environmental approval for that. And that's a 40 megawatt solar plant which we hopefully will see completed by the second half of next year and that gives us a bit of energy independence not entirely because it's not baseload power from the current uh, challenges in south africa similarly we're also targeting a 30 megawatt project solar project in zimbabwe to support uh, the zim project so it's it's a uh, dual purpose it's economically makes sense from a tariff point of view but also assists us in our decarbonization strategy yeah uh, look all this costs money i know last year your capital expenditure was what 49.3 million dollars i think you've got about 112 uh, million dollars uh, in cash on the balance sheet which uh, which sounds a lot of money in, in the context of what you're trying to do uh, do you have to come back to the markets at all for money? I mean, you've got obviously got lots of plans to to spend uh, and to try and reinforce uh, the business model that you have in place. Uh, do you envisage needing any more money than you have already on the balance sheet? Yeah, so so that $112 million is net cash. So so that takes off the debt uh, of, of circa $100 million, which is really targeted and earmarked for, for the Cairo project. So yes, we are raising project finance um, and export credit finance for Cairo, which is ring fenced for the project of circa $260 million. We well progressed in terms of that capital raise. And so that's really the big ticket item for us now is to fully fund Cairo. Uh, beyond that, we I believe that our cash generation, cash flows support the business and those other initiatives that I outlined in terms of our Vision 2025 strategy while maintaining uh, the dividend policy. And of course, uh, yeah, delivering uh, to your clients as well, as you met, as you said in the earlier part of the interview, it's of course part of the uh, idea of delivering. Um, let's take a look at the share price chart, uh, which recently has uh, disappeared below some support at about 94 pence, so 86.75 at the moment. Uh, what do you say to uh, potential investors in Teresa and this stock price chart? What's it, what, what's it telling you about the business? What, what's it not factoring in? Well, it, there's a disconnect between the real value and the cash generation ability of the business and the share price. So I think that um, if anything, the message is there's a deep value proposition and and uh, uh, the the realization that this is a robust business. We've been profitable since 2015. We've been paying dividends for eight years, distributed $90 million to shareholders. So I think there's a general uh, lack of positive sentiment around resources and mining. The results compared to last year when we had peak rhodium pricing, um, were obviously impacted uh, from a profitability point of view, but notwithstanding that in the context and the current challenges, I think a very solid and stable set of results. So when you look at us on a comparative basis to our, our South African PGM peers, they trading on a six times earning multiple, six times earnings multiple, where we are trading just below two times. So, so there is definitely a value gap and a disconnect. So, so the message is, uh, you know, I think you're, there's deep value and an uplift in uh, in opportunity here for for shareholders. Yeah, just just one final question. As is always the case, it's always interesting to know what's what's in your inbox and and the sort of news development, uh, the pipeline that we're expecting in the next uh, uh, six months or so. Anything we should watch out for from Teresa to um, indicate that things are online. 
So yeah, I think what's 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 exciting is obviously the continuous feedback and update on the Cairo project, uh, which which we will share with with uh, the investor community and stakeholders uh, as we progress and, and get closer to execution there, and um, we obviously will be sharing some of the research and development initiatives. Uh, we'll be launching uh, one of our our projects uh, next month. Um, and uh, and really significant in light of energy challenges globally and 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 regionally. Uh, so yeah, I think consistent uh, messaging, consistent uh, cash generation, and and really uh, supporting our our strategic initiatives. Yeah, look, it's a pleasure to catch up. Thanks indeed for joining us uh, for looking to these interim numbers we've seen out this morning from Teresa uh, Fivos Perulis. Uh, thanks for your time, Chief Executive of the company.